All right, let's sit down and really unpack what's going on with the Mac Mini, because the story around Apple's compact desktop is suddenly way more interesting than people expected. If you've been following Apple's product cycle over the last couple of years, you'll know that the Mac Mini has always been something of a wild card in the lineup. It's not the shiny flagship like the iPhone that gets all the advertising dollars. It's not the aspirational, creative class machine like the MacBook Pro that dominates influencer reviews and professional workflows. And it's not the bold, colorful design statement like the iMac that Apple often shows off in marketing. Instead, the Mac Mini has always quietly been the workhorse. It's the little box that can do almost anything, depending on how you set it up. You can use it as a cheap entry into Mac OS if you just want a desktop on your desk. You can build it into a server farm. You can hook it up to your TV as a home media center, or if you go for the pro versions, you can even get workstation level performance at a fraction of the cost of a Mac studio. That flexibility is why the Mac mini has earned a kind of cult following over the years, even when Apple wasn't paying it much attention. Now, here's where things take a dramatic turn. Recently, Apple quietly pulled down the M4 Mac mini announcement video from their official YouTube channel. At first glance, you might shrug and think, okay, maybe they're just cleaning up old videos. But here's the twist. The M4 iMac video is still up. The M4 MacBook Pro video is still up. Only the Mac Mini video disappeared, and that has already sent rumor sites, Apple analysts, and hardcore fans into a frenzy of speculation. Because if Apple is already hiding the M4 Mac Mini, does that mean the M5 Mac Mini is right around the corner? Could Apple really be about to refresh one of its newest desktops less than a year after launch? If so, that would be one of the fastest product turnovers in Mac Mini history, and honestly, that possibility is fascinating. Because the Mac Mini is not a product that usually gets rapid updates. In fact, historically, Apple often left it sitting for years without a refresh back in the Intel days. The Mini sometimes felt like an afterthought, a product that Apple forgot about until suddenly deciding to throw it a new chip. But the Apple Silicon era has completely changed the equation. With the introduction of the M1, then the M2, and most recently the M4, the Mini has started keeping pace with the rest of the Mac lineup in a way we never saw before. And now, with rumors of the M5 Mac Mini surfacing in late 2025, we might be seeing a new chapter in Apple's desktop strategy. Now let's break down what exactly has been reported. Apple insider Marco Zivich recently uncovered device identifiers that point directly to upcoming Mac Mini models equipped with M5 chips. Not just the base M5, but also an M5 Pro variant. This mirrors what Apple did with the M4 generation, where both a standard and a Pro version launched side by side. On paper, that makes perfect sense. Apple's entire Mac strategy now revolves around scaling its silicon across different tiers. M, M Pro, M Max, and sometimes M Ultra. So naturally, we'd expect both an M5 and an M5 Pro Mac Mini. But remember, with Apple, nothing is guaranteed. This is the same company that skipped the M3 generation entirely for the Mac Mini, jumping straight from the M2 Pro to the redesigned M4 lineup. So the fact that we're now seeing testing identifiers for M5 Minis is a pretty big deal. It means Apple isn't sidelining the Mini, it's keeping it lockstep with the rest of the Mac family. But let's be real, the question everyone actually cares about is performance. What kind of jump are we going to see with the M5 chip compared to the M4? If you were hoping for a mind-blowing revolutionary leap, you might want to temper your expectations. The best information we have right now comes from respected analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, who suggests that the M5 will be built on TSMC's new 3NP manufacturing process. That's basically an improved version of the 3 nanometer node used for the M4. In everyday language, this means the M5 will likely be more power efficient and moderately faster, but not a total game changer. If the performance scaling follows the same pattern as previous Apple Silicon updates, we're probably looking at somewhere in the range of 15-25% improvement over the M4. And don't get me wrong, that's still a nice bump. It means smoother rendering, faster exports, better thermal performance, and more headroom for heavy multitasking. But it's not going to feel like jumping from Intel to M1 did. It's incremental, not transformative. Now here's the bigger question. Is that enough reason to upgrade? If you just bought an M4 Mac Mini in 2024, should you really be trading it in for an M5 in 2025 or early 2026? In my honest opinion, the answer is no, at least not for most people. Everyday users who rely on their Mac Mini for web browsing, office productivity, coding, light creative work, or even mid-level design and editing won't suddenly feel their M4 is outdated. A 20% performance boost is nice, but it's not life-changing. Where the M5 will shine is in very specific workflows, high-resolution video editing, 3D rendering, complex simulations, 
or any environment where every percentage of speed really matters. For professionals in those spaces, the M5 Pro Mac Mini could be a lifesaver. It could deliver near workstation performance in a tiny, quiet box that sits on your desk without taking up space or generating a ton of heat. But for most buyers, the really exciting story here isn't even the M5 itself. It's what the arrival of the M5 does to the M4 Mac Mini's pricing. We're already seeing discounts pop up across retailers. In the US, the base M4 Mini, which launched at $599, has dipped closer to $490 in recent weeks. That's wild considering this machine is less than a year old and already one of the best value Max Apple has ever released. And remember, the M4 Mini wasn't just a chip update, it was a full redesign. Apple finally gave it a fresh chassis for the first time since 2010, shrinking it down, making it sleeker, and crucially adding front-facing USB-C ports for convenience. On the Pro models, you even got Thunderbolt 5 support. So this isn't some outdated design. It's still modern, it's still fresh, and it's still extremely capable. Which means, when the M5 launches, the M4 is going to become a bargain hunter's dream. If you care about value, this is the moment to pay attention. Now let's zoom out and look at the bigger Apple ecosystem. The Mac Mini doesn't exist in isolation. The M5 chipset rollout will hit several product categories almost simultaneously. The iPad Pro, for example, is already rumored to ship with M5 chips in late 2025. After last year's dramatic redesign with OLED displays and thinner chassis, this year's update will likely be smaller, focused primarily on silicon. The MacBook Pro lineup is also expected to refresh with M5, M5 Pro, and M5 Max chips in early 2026. But here's the kicker. Insiders are already saying that the MacBook Pro will receive its first major redesign since 2021, but not until late next year, likely with the M6 generation. That means if you're considering a MacBook Pro, you might actually want to wait, because the M6 models could bring both a design refresh and a bigger performance leap. Meanwhile, the iMac is also expected to quietly join the M5 Club around the same time, but again, don't expect exterior changes. Just like the Mini, the iMac's colorful redesign is still too fresh to replace. Coming back to the Mini, what this all tells us is that Apple is finally treating it as a first-class citizen in the lineup. No more years of neglect. No more being stuck on outdated chips. The Mini is marching forward with the same cadence as the MacBook Pro and the iMac. And that's fantastic news for consumers, because it means we have more choices at every tier of the market. Now, let's be practical for a second. Should you buy the M5 Mac Mini when it launches? My advice is simple. If you're the kind of buyer who always wants the latest and greatest, who pushes their machine to the absolute limits, or who just enjoys owning Apple's newest silicon, then yes, the M5 will deliver. You'll get faster performance, better efficiency, and likely longer software support into the future. But if you're a value-focused buyer, if you care about bang for your buck, then the real winner here is the M4. Once those discounts deepen, and they absolutely will as we approach the M5 launch, you'll be able to score one of the best deals in Apple's desktop history. And the best part? You won't feel like you're missing out on much, because the M4 is already overkill for most everyday tasks.